welcome to my channel and in this tutorial we are given this question we have a triangle and inside this triangle is inscribed a semicircle such that the diameter of this semicircle is touching this part of the triangle and also notice that the arc of this particular semicircle is also touching this size of the triangle and it has the triangle is measured six meters for each side. And the question is asking us to find the area of this particular semicircle. Now, how do you answer this question? You just need to remember that for you to get the area of a semicircle, it's just for you to calculate the area of a circle. So we know to where that for every circle, the area is pi r squared. Now, for us to get that of a semicircle, we have it that for semicircle, it's just for you to divide the area of the circle into two equal parts. So it means it's going to give us this. But the question is, how do we find the radius of this particular semicircle? Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. So to answer this question, what do we do? The question has told us that this part is the diameter of this semicircle from this end to this end is the diameter. And if it is the diameter, we can figure out the center of the semicircle. So the center can be somewhere here. And if this becomes the center, you know that the line from the center touching any part of the circumference or the arc of the circle is what we call the radius. So from here to this point is the radius. From here to this point is the radius. You can form as many radius as you want. You can also form from here down to this. You can form from here to this point. You can form it from here to here. You can form from here to here. But we want to get this significant radii that will help us in answering this. And what are they? We can get it from here just to touch this part of the semicircle. So we can get our radius this way. And we can also get the radius this way. Did you see that? And if this is true, remember that for each time you have, you see that this arc of the circle is touching the, the triangle at this part. It means that this line becomes the tangent because for every circle drawn, a line that touches the circumference of it, this part is the circumference. So any line that is touching the circumference at a point is what we call the tangent line. And this reminds you of a theorem. And what is that theorem? The theorem says that for each time you draw a tangent and there is a line from the center, which we know a line from the center touching the circumference is what we call the radius. So whenever the radius comes in contact with the tangent, it always makes angle 90. In that case, we call it the tangent and the radius theorem. So this is going to help us a lot in answering this. We have seen that we have formed this significant radius. We can take this part off. Let's work with this one. We have formed this significant radius. We can form it since it has touched this part. This part becomes the tangent. So since it's touching it at this point, it means it forms angle 90 at this. Your reason is your tangent and radius theorem. Now, of what use will this be to us? Let's see to that. So with this, you know that from here, just watch. You see that from here to this end is our six meters. From here to here is six. And if this is true, it means that from this end, from here down to this part, is going to take half of it, which is three meters. So if this part is three meters, from this end to this is three, and you know that from here to here is our radius. What do you think we should do to find this radius? Now, it means that, do you remember that this triangle, this triangle, the big triangle here, is having the size to be the same. And whenever you have a triangle that has the three sides to be the same, it reminds you of what we call a equilateral triangle. And if this is equilateral because the sides are all the same, it means that for every equilateral, the angles are also equal because each of the angles will always give you 60 degrees. And you know that the sum of angles 
of a triangle is 180. So each equilateral angle is always 60 degrees. And if this is true, it means that this makes angle 60 here, it makes angle 60 here, and also makes angle 60 at this point. Now, with this be of use to us? Yes, because we can bring this shape out. Let's bring this shape out to see what we can do with it. So bringing it out, we have. And if you had watched through this point, it shows what to do in tries to, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you are still new, hit that subscription button. If you find this interesting, don't forget to share with others. Let's keep doing this to have. So bringing out this part of the shape, you see what we have there? This angle here is 60 degrees. And this length you see is 3 meters. Here is R. So what do you do? Whenever you have two sides, you are looking for one of the sides and you have an angle. Each time you are working with size and angle of a right triangle, you see that this has formed right triangle. Always remember to make use of your trig ratio. So at this point, you are going to use trig ratio. So to do that, remember this side becomes the hypotenuse side and this is where the angle is formed. Automatically, the side opposite becomes the opposite side. And the remaining side is the adjacent. So if you apply your trig ratio, use your soccer tour. So which of these are we going to apply? You see we have the hypotenuse side and we are looking for the opposite. So which one do we go for? The one that has opposite and hypotenuse is this. So we don't need these two. So using our so, which we are going to now have sine of this angle 60 is equal to our opposite is our radius and we are dividing it by three. So what do you do? Multiply each part by three. So let's do that to have. To do that, we now have multiply this by three. Our radius is going to give us three sine 60 degrees. And this becomes the radius of this particular semicircle. Now that we have formed the radius, how do we get the area? Remember the area of the semicircle is given as this. So let's work it out using this to have. So finding the area of the semicircle, we now have it as pi r squared divided by 2. So this is going to give us our area is pi multiplied by our radius is this. So we have r sine. You remember that sine 60, 60 is a special angle. And we know it that, that sine 60 Sine 60 is given as root 3 divided by 2. So in that case, we are going to replace our sine 60 with this value. So we are going to have our radius is going to be 3. Our sine 60 is this. So we have 3 multiplied by root 3 divided by 2. And it has to be squared. And then you divide your result by 2. So let's simplify this. We now have area is pi multiply. This times this gives us 3 root 3 divided by 2 and is squared. Then we divide the result. So let's do it well. So we have this and is divided by 2. Let's simplify the answer. So from here, we now have our area is pi multiply square this and also square, square each value in the bracket. So we have 3 squared multiply root 3 squared, and then divided by 2 squared, and everything is divided by 2. Simplify, finally, we have area is pi multiply, 3 squared is 9, this square cancels the square root, 2 squared will give us 4, we can turn this division to this, and this is 2 divided by 1. So we now have the area is pi multiply 9 times this gives us 27. So we have 27 divided by 4. Change this to multiplication. You reciprocate this. So it's giving us 1 half. So we now have our area is multiply this. You have 27 multiply this. You have 8 pi square units. So this gives us the area of this particular semicircle. And I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like this video, share. I'll also be curious to see your own method. If this helps you, 
share with others. I will see you in my next class. Thank you and bye.